So Databricks, the company that is most known for their data lake house, has been trying to break into the business intelligence tool market for quite some time. And in 2024, they announced Genie. Okay, so this is what data intelligence is. We want you to be able to ask, how's the business doing on its FY goals? And we want the platform to be able to understand what that means. They were the first company that I saw that was taking this new LLM tech and applying it in a business intelligence application. And I think this application is actually the future of BI. Don't get me wrong, beautiful dashboards will still exist, but I see this shift of business intelligence teams moving from curating reports and dashboards to curating data sets and semantic models. And I think they have a real chance of disrupting Microsoft here, in particular, disrupting Power BI. First, Genie, which I'm going to show you later on in this video, and I'm going to show you how to configure, is much easier to use and a much more polished product, in my opinion, than Power BI's implementation of Copilot. But they're doing something really interesting with their licensing of Genie. And in order to understand just how disruptive this licensing scheme could potentially be to the market, you need to understand how Power BI disrupted Tableau. You see, Tableau was the first data dashboarding tool that many of us learned and got familiar with. And there's a real reason for that. You see, they gave it away completely for free to students and educators. And so what happened was that as students entered into the employment market, enterprises were able to justify the real high licensing costs of Tableau, in part because there was already a huge base of potential employees that knew the tool and knew how to use it. However, Microsoft, they were, well, a little late to the dashboarding and data visualization game. However, they did have one thing, and that was Excel and the rest of the Microsoft Office 365 suite, which is at enterprises all over the world. So what did they do? Well, they released Microsoft Power BI Desktop completely for free. So that way students and educators, they could learn it. And then they severely undercut Tableau in licensing costs because they wrapped it up into the Office 365 license. So what for Tableau was a $1,200, $600 license for Microsoft Power BI became maybe even a $100 add-on to a pre-existing Office 365 license. It was pennies on the dollar. And while reporting suites are big investments and they take time and years to build, eventually people stopped paying for Tableau and they moved on over to Power BI and Power BI was able to capture market share. And I see that same thing happening right now, only this time Microsoft's the one being disrupted. What do I mean? Well, let's talk about it. Databricks, similar to the way Microsoft already had tons of users on Office 365, has tons of engineering and most companies' large data already on their platform. So they have a real advantage over Microsoft in the LLM space because LLMs require massive amounts of data. And that's something that Microsoft is having to pitch their end users to bring into their Power BI fabric service, whereas Databricks already has it. Then just like Microsoft undercut Tableau on cost, Databricks is doing the exact same thing to Microsoft. First, they released a fully featured version of their software pretty much completely for free. I'm gonna use it in this video. Students and teachers can use it and it's going to drive up adoption of their platform. Second, and this is what's really interesting, is they're not charging for their Databricks Genie compute, whereas Microsoft is charging for their Copilot compute. In order to fully use Copilot, you have to have a Microsoft Fabric FSKU, whereas in order to use Databricks, you don't really have to pay anything additional other than you normally would for accessing the data. And that is absolutely fascinating. So let's log into Databricks and let's kind of explore Genie and talk about some best practices and how you can set one up on your own. So starting things off, here I am in Databricks Free Edition. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to log in by clicking this Continue with Microsoft button and then clicking log in with my Microsoft account. And that'll bring me into Databricks Free Edition. 
In order to get to Genie, all I have to do is click into this Genie workspace, and then you'll see a Genie space that Databricks configured specifically to introduce you to AI BI Genie. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click this, and then we're gonna have to start up our compute. In this case, it's a SQL warehouse. So I'm gonna go ahead and click start. And while that's going on, I'm gonna kind of walk you around Databricks Genie. So we have a few different things here in this context section. We have our data, which is all of our data objects that we've added on in from our catalogs. And in order to add one, you just click right here and then click in and you just add it. We have instructions, which are custom instructions that we can use to define measures or to provide the model. Uh, additional context. And then we have SQL queries. And SQL queries serve two different purposes. One, the LLM can use it to better understand your data, but also it can serve as a trusted answer. So you can give it questions that it can use this query to answer. Now, Databricks is different from Copilot because it improves the more that you use it. So if you ask it a question, it'll go through, and I just asked it a question by clicking one of its suggested questions, it'll go through and it'll provide you an answer. Then what it'll do is it'll give you a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also, however, click request review and it will submit that answer to the analyst or to the owner of the genie space for them to review and to reply back to you with a correct answer. The more the model gets this feedback, the better the model gets. And this is something that Microsoft currently does not have in Copilot. So other than this near constant improvement, how can you make a great genie? Well, the first thing is metadata. So if we go into our catalog here, and then if we go into, uh, I believe probably our samples and then into our bakehouse sample, what you'll see is that as we click through these data objects that the genie is using is that it has a ton of different metadata. It has a description and it has columns. Although I'm actually a little surprised that in this sample, they haven't gone ahead and added comments and then foreign and primary key constraints because that's something that Databricks Genie absolutely loves. Now, another thing that Genie absolutely loves, if we go back into this space, is it loves when you go ahead and you start to define answers. So for example, right here is a question that I asked. If I go into this, I can review the answer, right? I can mark it as correct or wrong. Then I can exit out and I can go over here to SQL queries and functions. I can enter in that exact same query, give it the correct SQL if it was wrong, give it parameters that it can use to pass or change or modify that SQL query slightly, and then give it additional guidance on how it should use that example and in what relative context. Now you may have just watched that really quick overview and thought, hey, there's no way I'm letting my business users into that Databricks interface. Well, don't worry because Databricks in their 2025 conference just announced Databricks One, which is a new business experience specifically designed for business users. So you can hide all of that techno mumbo jumbo behind a really slick UI. So what do you think? Do you think Databricks is gonna be able to disrupt Microsoft in this space? Well, regardless of your opinion now, you can go on Databricks' website, you can sign up for a Databricks free account, and you can try Genie out for yourself. And I think that is how they're ultimately gonna be able to win this LLM BI tool race. If you enjoyed this video, I actually normally make Microsoft Power BI and Fabric tutorials. So if you are a user of either of those two products, consider subscribing. And if you just enjoyed this video about Databricks Genie, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.